Today's stream is uh, going to be an interesting one. we got uh, a guest in the chat with us today, Mr. Nembom, YouTube extraordinaire with the incredible Minecraft contraptions, and now a Mojang developer as well. Yeah, Nembom's here to just uh, like gather some feedback about 1.20 from the community. It's one of the one of the special things about Minecraft is that we have a relationship with Mojang where they've always they've had a history of being around the community, taking in suggestions, listening to feedback, and uh, we've got a little bit of that going on directly here today. And I made a list of all the things in 1.20, uh, all the big features anyway, like all those little quality of life changes and stuff. Like I'm realizing due to the new way the game's being developed, those are all things going into 1.19. So it's cool that some of those smaller things that don't really need to rely on a big content update are coming, but then I realised by the time 1.20 comes around, there's probably going to be a bunch of like other little tweaks and changes that one will be known for. So it's going to be a curious thing to see how it all plays out. Nembom has actually thrown a message in chat saying, from the larger features we have seen so far, what gets you most hyped so far, if anything? You know, I think for me, it's probably a tie between the camel and the bamboo block set. I really like the bamboo block set. It feels like a texture that many could have dreamed of because bamboo's been in the game for some time. It's a very uh, satisfying set of textures. One that I think is going to help tell a story and be just all around a real good one to, to work with. And I think a lot of players will be excited. Also, when you're updating your world and stuff, you're potentially going to already have bamboo farms. It feels like a really smart thing to do. When I look at game development, I always like this idea of overlapping features and trying to create depth to things through them being interlinked with one another so you can kind of like interact with them in different ways from a Minecraft perspective, let's say. But with something like the bamboo block set, it's just this real simple case of it's already a part of the game and now you've just given it a whole other use. But I do think when adding a set of blocks, I wonder if this game at some point runs into a problem where when you give the players too many options, does the creativity dull down a little bit? So far, it feels like, I read a lot of comments, it feels like some parts of the audience anticipate that for a long time, many years, and yet here we are in 2023, and 10 years ago we were hearing comments about this, you know, the World of Color update or something like that. So it seems to me like Mo Minecraft is probably robust enough to support like a really large set of uh, playable blocks. So I think the way that uh, Bamboo's been implemented is really good. The other one that I'm really excited for is the Camel because it's a two-player rideable mob and that just opens up a whole new dynamic. We've we've had rideable mobs. They've been sort of underutilized by the Elytra. The Elytra has come along and really kind of um, unbalanced things, you could say, in terms of modes and methods of transport. And this one goes for a different angle. It's not about speed, it's about abilities. The way that you can use it to shield yourself from mobs and have a player join you on it, it's going to be great for making mini games which is admittedly more of a community server type feature, but still a great a great thing nonetheless. And they look cool, and you know. Uh, Nembo says, I agree about Elytra renders obsolete many other ways of transport. It does, it does. And um, I think it'd be worth like a good brainstorm session to think about how other types of transports could be given features that make them more viable again. I feel like the minecart would probably be one of the easiest ones to buff because it's already got this like layer of interaction with the world through hopper minecarts and it would probably be easy to expand on that in some way. Uh, maybe like automatic mounting and dismounting of the player would be a really good buff for it because you could travel somewhere in the elytra but maybe sometimes you just want the game to take you there, right? You know, like a, an automated way to get to a another farm. That, that could potentially be something to do with it. So yeah, the, the camels it, is really nice. It's cute. I do, I do, I would like to see the game have more unique creatures added, like the sniffer, you know, ones that are not just pulled from the real world. Uh, that's the only, like, downside I see with the camel, really, is that it's a little bit boring in that dimension, but, you know, it, uh, it is what it is. What other features does the camel have? It's got the protection from the player, it can jump it can jump over bigger walls right and then it's got the two player riding and i think that's i think that's the like majority of its powerful attributes if you like yeet oh yeah it can yeet <laughs> yes the camel can yeet the dash not sure like you got to you got to get stuck in in survival to really uh, experience this stuff that i would like i would like uh, an incentive to do that like i tend to just cover what's in the snapshot and then don't really experience it until it comes to hermitcraft 
would be nice to have another way to experience it because I'm, I'm not like a I'm not really into speed running I don't like playing in worlds for a short amount of time I like playing in worlds for a long time so it's kind of hard for me to like just fire up the game and play a bunch of survival with the camel or whatever I need to find a I need to find a way that works for me is what I'm saying to do that so I think that Minecraft was perfect from the start I remember just digging into the ground building a glass roof as a kid and being satisfied every new update brings new features that I really like at the same time, every update is also at risk of introducing features that aren't so great. Cough, Phantom. <laughs> but for me, the new features don't take away from the beauty of Minecraft. I couldn't agree more with that sentiment. And I actually think it's one of the reasons that developing this game is so interesting. Because I feel like its core genius is just like this unalterable thing right at the beginning of the game. And no matter how, how much you want to do various things with different aspects of the game, like exploration and uh, PvP. Maybe Redstone's one that can kind of be like interestedly expanded upon. You know, if you think over the years, like at first it was pistons, then you've got like observers and honey and slime blocks. Like they have actually been like pretty game-changing features right there. But uh, the beauty of the game, the core of it is just, it's there and it, and it works. And it's kind of hard to really change much around that. Like, like I don't, I don't think ex. Well, expl depending on how much you like, like how the terrain generates. I think exploration is one of those things where once you understand the game's quirks and what terrain looks like and stuff, unless you're a certain type of player, it kind of loses its spark after a certain amount of time. Yeah, like it, it feels like a lot of the aspects of the game aren't really actually like that deep, but its just initial charm is like the real spark, and it's hard to like elaborate on that and, and really build it out, so to speak. The raft should offer something different. I don't know what it would be. Maybe it can avoid, uh, you know, the, the bubbles, like the magma blocks in the ocean pulling you down. I feel like that would be a very mild feature and maybe something that doesn't really even give, I don't know, mini gamers an advantage, for example. Like, there's not really a lot to do with that. But I don't know, just, you know, it's slightly different than the boat. It'd be nice if it functioned different. I always, I always like the variety in Minecraft and I love I love it when there's like loads of options and then the quirk of one block somewhere just, just makes this idea that you have possible. And it's cool that there's so many blocks that give you loads of options. So I, I like the idea of the raft just having a little something special going for it. Maybe it's slightly faster or uh, has some sort of ability to traverse differently. Here's another message from Nembomb saying, Players chose the Phantom. Implementation was quite accurate as to what was promised. I'm not sure how much it was... But like, I don't think, I don't think that's like, I don't, I don't think that's like a, I don't know, what, what is the philosophy on changing features, right? Like, I, I think if Moyang overhauled the Phantom and made it something more interesting, I think generally that would be well received, right? I think just based on how the Minecraft audience is, I think if you give them a sort of, like, I know you're not saying this, but like, it's what you chose, it's your fault kind of answer. I, I don't think that goes down particularly well given the nature of some of the negative voices in the community. But I think the problem with the mob vote stuff is that it's geared towards generating hype, but it has this problem of just giving the players a space in which to put their imagination into and, and therefore be disappointed. If I were in charge, I think the mob vote would just be an easy scrap for me. I, I would just say this is this doesn't work because a lot of the community just, you know, gets upset about not getting their way. And then if you do get your way, there's also there's also this slant of like it might not be what you thought it was. And uh, now now that I think about it, like the last couple of mob votes have been actually the mobs have been quite well articulated. Like the sniffer is very much like described, which is definitely better. But still, you're just giving you're giving players an opportunity to imagine something, and they'll always imagine it being way better than it is because the reality is any new mob, any new thing added into this game will do very little to to really change it or like enhance the amazing quality that already is the game so it's kind of like a recipe for disappointment as I see it because players imaginations will think like this will be the bee's knees and generally not that, that, that's again all this stuff that I'm saying talking in like absolute statements it's just my impression based on reading comments and being someone covering the updates and seeing reactions to it you know
Um, Nembomb says, I was kind of kidding about the Phantom, but we are all aware of it being quite annoying. What about the newly introduced features that were not hinted? Trims, cherry, sniffer, or archaeology? Let's go through them. I've got a feeling I'm going to do a, like, critique video on archaeology. It feels to me like we're going to have to see some really interesting stuff added to it, otherwise I would consider it to be uh, a pretty weak addition. Uh, yeah, again, maybe if I played it more, like, I always have to, like, theorize of what it's like in survival a bit, because survival's quite time-consuming, and I play on here, but to me, it felt, it was exciting to see it all at first, and then I thought about, like, you know, going out there and uh, interacting with the suspicious sand, and then I was thinking about, like, how it was first shown, because... Uh, archaeology, although it was kept quiet, it was actually first shown at Minecon 2020. It actually, in my eyes, it looked way more interesting with the developer art because those clay pots, they just, the art on them looked interesting and, you know, a little bit of colour in there and stuff as well. And the four designs that we've been shown at the moment, they're all right, but just four, it, it feels very slim. Uh, I, I, I do not see myself being motivated to go explore the world to get my hands on those four pottery shards at all. That might sound a bit harsh, that's just kind of how I feel, and I think I know why. It's because it's very shallow at its current introduction. The amount of designs you can make, sure like you could say it's a lot because you can rotate the block and all of this but really it's just very light um there's not a lot you can do with those pots I, I like the way you can put lots of items on top of them that's something that you can do and then make the pots look a little unique that way but in terms of putting these designs on them the designs don't say a lot and the act of like yeah, okay, you can craft the brush, it's not a big deal. Uh, you're at a desert temple, or you come across a well, grab your brush, you know, might get a pottery shard. I was thinking a little bit about what sort of ideas I'd propose to make that more exciting and interesting, and I, I really think what would be good is if there is actually a large range of designs to put on those pots. Colourful designs, things that are, like, unique. You know, like the paintings in Minecraft? They've been around for so long we kind of forget about them. Uh, paintings are, like, quite colourful and interesting and provide some contrast and a lot of cool detail. This is what those pots should be doing, I think. They should be providing you something really quite colourful and decorative to put in your base. But as they currently stand, they're kind of dull and there's only a couple of designs. I haven't thought this through a lot, but this is kind of where my mind was going. I'm waiting to see the snapshots and see like where Moyang go with this. But I think what I would do is make it so that Suspicious Sand pretty much generates in every single biome. But it's like really rare, tricky to like deliberately find. And it's just something you're going to stumble across every now and then. And when you do, there should be a large variety of fragments that you can get for it. And all sorts of interesting patterns, maybe like almost like mini picturettes of the world, let's say. Because you could theme it around the biome that you find it in, for example. And then that way, you have something quite unique feeling. All of a sudden, you've got this thing that's like really quite tricky to find. Like if you wanted to play a game of Collect Them All, I mean, just imagine every single biome in the game. And like, it not it's not like you just go to the beach and find sand or they're, they're at a structure. It like, maybe it just generates Okay, this biome, let's say on average for every chunk, has 10 blocks of sand in it or something. Not even one of those might be suspicious sand. You can make these things like really quite rare and just very unique and novel to stumble across and then give yourself uh, a really cool reward. That's kind of where my thinking was going with uh, that idea. Because, yeah, the, the act at the moment is you know the two places you need to go visit. It's not going to be hard to find a desert. Go to the temple, go to this place. Then you're just going to wave your brush over the suspicious stuff. And then you're going to get these, like, dull pottery shards. Yeah, you can make a bunch of unique combinations or whatever, but not really that big a deal. I saw that someone suggested finding the trim patterns also for the pots. I think it was on Twitter. Yeah, I think finding smithing templates through something like that would be interesting too. That kind of feature overlap. The clay pots themselves are more interesting than the shards, so I prefer to be able to paint the thing rather than add a pattern. Yeah, I think some interaction with dye and painting them as well would also be really cool. But as honestly, as they currently stand, it, it felt really disappointing. You know, like, it was all exciting to see it roll out, then you, you turn on the thinking cap and it's like, I'm not, not too uh, convinced about this one after all. Uh, let's go to the hanging signs. I feel like the hanging signs will be a quick one. They're good. A few more shapes, not bad. Uh, it does take a little bit of the creativity away from how players discover, like, signs plus other blocks, make them look unique. But they're really well designed, they just, they look good, they're Minecrafty. I don't think we can have any complaints. Uh, maybe, maybe one bit of critique would be 
uh, sort of inventory clutter and continuously adding more types of sign like maybe it'd be nice for to have one sign block and then have many different ways to place it again a kind of inventory management issue where there are certain quirks in this game how do you place blocks like some block you place them and they place based on what way you're facing and then other blocks place based on which side of the block you just clicked on it'd be nice to see like more consistency with stuff like that and systems that are a little more friendly on the inventory clutter so like having one sign for all of them i think would have been better like you know you you place it but you've got a variety of ways to uh, manipulate that oh so if you could place signs on chains and then it kind of transforms into a hanging sign that would make sense because you can't actually place a sign underneath a chain or something like that so the act of it accepting that and then changing it yep but i, I think it would require probably some change to the interface of the game or the way in which you tell the game to place a block you need like that extra layer of place this type or something so I, i'm not sure if that's um realistically that's not probably going to happen at this stage but something maybe to consider for future features is like to avoid clutter if you want to have more variations like can there not be ways to bring these new variations in without cluttering up the inventory and giving the player more placing options in the world uh note blocks and piglin heads i've got here the piglin head being added that's cool as you probably know nembom uh here on hermitcraft we have all the mob heads thanks to data packs and I think it just adding a head every now and then is kind of cool. It feels like one of those things you could do every update. Every update should have maybe a painting, a new mob head, you know, so it slowly fills out. The question that arises is like, why the piglin head and why not other ones? Maybe there doesn't really need to be an answer to that, you know. It's a bit more of a, well, you know, don't have to add them all, sure. But I don't know, I wonder like what's, what's the long term plan for that because... I think a lot of players just want to see more mob heads. The functionality to link them up with the note block, really good. Let's players have so much more fun being able to manipulate certain game sounds. Really cool idea. Archaeology is still a work in progress compared to the other features that are already released as 1.20 that feel more finished, says Nambom. Yeah, I, I'm kind of curious as to like what the, the, the roadmap is right now because... It, like it's not clear when 1.19.4 is going to drop i'm sure there'll probably be an announcement before long and then it's is that now that like the last of the features for 1.20 have been revealed which is what it feels like maybe there's still more stuff they're going to chuck in but now that we've seen these things it kind of feels like how much more time is going to be put into this stuff because clearly things like the biome have been held back to be released in a much more finished state. It's got me wondering how much more time is going to be spent on 1.20 because the plan is to, you know, actively develop archaeology. It could potentially go a long way and do a lot better. If that's what you're here for, some archaeology ideas, I, I really think, well, I've, I've made my argument, but I, I've, that's, I haven't given it a crazy amount of thought, but I really think the act of um, making them just like rare collectibles, like in its current iteration, it doesn't feel like a thing to go seeking out. Oh, I really want to go collect those pottery shards. It doesn't have that. Um, but maybe the act of just like occasionally finding a really cool, unique pattern might just give it a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of fun. Piglin head, cool. Note blocks, we like that. Chiseled bookshelf next. That's on my list. I think the chiseled bookshelf is pretty cool. There's, there's not too much to say about it. It just works, right? Like finally, people have been asking for it for years. You now got it. Uh, a bookshelf where you can manipulate the amount of books on it in the exact positions. That's awesome. What I'm not so sure about is how the redstone works. It, it feels to me like, if I'm not mistaken, it's the act of changing a book that updates the redstone signal. It remembers the last book that was interacted with, so it's a unique container that remembers its interaction state. Ah, okay. It was the way you worded it. Like, I, I, I've i read the description that it remembers the last slot, and it just didn't didn't quite click. So it's like, book in or book out, it's the last one that you're going to use with it. What's this? Chisel bookshelf acts like you know input in this case. Signal strength proportional to its fullness would make it less unique compared to other containers. Yeah, no, I now, I now get it. I now get it. I just, when I'd interacted with it, it, like, wasn't making sense to me what was going on. When I read your message, I just had a feeling that maybe now I get it, and I do. What's the rest of the 1.20 stuff? Armor trim. Armor trim. I think some of it... I mean, I made a whole video about that, so I probably won't go into it too deep. But uh, I think some of the designs are really terrific, but 
the whole like the like in in the big range of things that you can do there's a lot of like combinations that are a bit on the naff side and then when you consider how like precious armor can be in terms of like when you die and stuff the expense of all that extra effort that you put into it, it feels like quite an end game player oriented thing for the amount of effort and exploration and stuff that you have to put into it i feel like it uh, appeals more to the hardcore than the casual and i'm not sure that well you can certainly choose some good designs right but if you imagine the designs were like that say random i think there's a lot of them that don't look so good and the way in which they're like attack on over the top of the shape of the armor to me doesn't look so great i think they could look a lot better if um they change the shape of the armor and they're a bit more unique so like having seen the feature it's great like it's a really awesome idea but if i were to think like rethink and say what do you go back to the drawing board and do this again i think one of the things that really needs to be addressed is the aesthetic value of armor and the functional value because you might want to make armor that you know uses leather and some of those color combinations but it's really futile some of the best combinations you can make have the leather colors because you can put ones that are more complementary to the material together because like redstone in my opinion and diamond don't go together very well uh, whereas different shades of leather can go really well with the redstone so like separating the aesthetic and the functional i think would have been really good and then the shape of the armor i think it perhaps would have been better to focus on exploration to find modifications that give you more of a finished configuration that's appealing you know like a little bit of trim and a little bit of shape maybe you can pick some color here and there but because of because of the way it was just pixels slapped on the on top of the existing armor it kind of like limited what could have been i think uh, a way more refined feature because there's there's like a lot of air quotes junk combinations let's say ones that just players just aren't going to pick and if you do go and pick it like what happens when you die like all that extra effort you have to put into your armor and then it's gone because it's really pricey like you know here on hermitcraft seven diamonds ain't a thing but for the average player that's quite the investment exploration price you pay once then you have access to it indefinitely so in case of you losing it you can go back to your uh, your set only paying the diamond price yeah the diamond price is seven times four that's 21 it might not sound like a lot but i think to some players it is i it, it may be maybe to those who are more technical players the sorts who can get stupid amounts of diamonds with, i don't know tunnel balls or just you know players like myself here on hermitcraft that have a lot of time to grind and stuff it's not quite a big deal but for the average player i can see i can see like especially if you die a lot like some players die more than others i don't die a lot but someone like scar does and if you're losing your armor a lot and then you have to pay this additional 21 diamond tax i, I really think it's pricey and should be definitely cheaper anyway at this state you know all these things that i'm suggesting and stuff i'm i'm not surprised if they're just you know it's this far into development they can't be changed and stuff but but hopefully like some of these ideas are valuable in uh, one way or another and uh, then says that's why now more common patterns always appear in pairs so when you use one you realize they are consumed yes that was that was a good change that was a smart change i think you know you get two and if you happen to use one and it's been consumed it's like oh so yeah i'm not sure what else i'd say about armor trim let's have a look at chat and see if there's any things i disagree with you on limiting combinations x people might only use certain combinations but having options to choose from your own preferences is good i sort of i sort of agree and disagree like in some circumstances i think a lot of choice and variety is really good like signs and being able to pick 16 different colors the armor like when a lot of those colors just look sort of tacky on top of the armor like is it really necessary i, I wouldn't be surprised if like if moyang had data like once 1.20 is out and you could see like what players were doing like, imagine all the player base right and getting those statistics in and having like a graph of which templates are the most popular and then which colors used with them are the most popular like i don't think that graph would have like a, an even distribution i think there would be certain things that would pop out and pop quite possibly just influenced by availability you know maybe the ones from the never hardly get used a lot of players don't like going to the never but you know it's not the worst thing ever as well like to me the way it's implemented i can think of a lot of ways i would choose to do it differently but it's 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 pretty cool right armor trim is cool at the end of the day there might be a bunch of combinations you don't like the look of but i'm, I'm probably going to be mixing netherite and quartz with that vex template that one looks seriously cool Nembom says current diamond armor is free because you can trade it from the villagers the game lost the sink for diamonds armor trims are the first major sink beside jukeboxes this is true this is true yeah you know it has it has been a thing 
I do wonder though for casual players like how many of them do get into villager trading and go that far of it do they even realize statistics would really help with this uh decision making right like being from the technical community I've noticed how well I say being from the technical community that's my most like I'm really interested in the technical aspect of the game but the way I play it I'm a bit more just an all-rounder right like I'm always looking at the game from like the farming perspective it's really easy just to just to think like that's the way most people play the game because it's really not and uh i've noticed sometimes the attitude in and around the technical community when like a farm gets nerfed or something like they don't realize that this is like a quite a niche way of playing really i think it's i think it's something that a lot of people watch but maybe not everyone plays that way Zug Zug says, I play first person single player, it's purely cosmetic, I have no use for trims. Very good point, if you're in single player, like, what's the point? Unless you like, unless you like to play in a way where you'll have an armor stand, like an armory room, and you'll hang your armor up, and some players really like to do that, they like to sort of be more in the world in that way, that's not the way I play uh, myself. I, I try to do it a little bit more, I try to be a little bit more engrossed in the environment and stuff. Like, because that's, that's one of the fun things about base building, is that you spend a lot of time there, and it sort of becomes like a home. But, like, we don't always treat it like a home. And one of the things you can do if you want to treat it like a home is hang up your armor at the end of the day, you know? Like, put it on display. So, you can you can play differently to that, but, you know, I totally get your point. I've never considered it until now, but I will probably be affected greatly by influencers as well. I bet everyone will be using the same trims as large YouTubers such as Hermits and DSMP players. Yep, that will definitely be a thing. The Torch Flower, interesting to not make it self-replenishable. I feel like when stuff gets added to this game, it seems to be a common thing that there's a push towards making everything replenishable. So the way in which that is, but through the sniffer, I don't know how the community received that. And I don't feel very strongly about it because I've got a feeling it, it won't be too difficult to farm and uh, you'll farm in a new and novel way. So I, th I think there's maybe a missed opportunity to make it emit light in a interesting way. This game could always benefit from uh, multiple ways of having light sources and it just feels like a bit of a missed opportunity not to have that one emit light given the fact that it's called the torchlight. Seems quite logical. Nembom says also most designs for trims have clues that link them to the structure they are found in. Maybe not all of them as are interesting but all of them have some meaning to where you find them. Yeah I, I totally got picked up on that like the Vex design for the mansion and stuff. Um, you can see a bit of the jungle temple design. Not the jungle, the desert temple design. Like that pattern comes through. Yeah, that was that was really quite clear, but maybe one of those things that I just didn't express in my snapshot video. So uh, the sniff is pretty cool. I I don't know. I don't know. I have too many strong thoughts on it. Really, it's like a big cool mob, and you'll go on a little adventure with it to find some uh, seeds. I don't know if anything else is planned for it, but you know, so far pretty cool, right? Nembom says pink petal flowers. I really like how it can be placed quite intuitively in 16 different combinations creating elaborate designs on the ground. Yep, took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> that was a very nice, nicely done thing. It was described in one of the posts as being a carpet and I was like, oh, that's that's interesting. There's going to be like a carpet block that sort of looks different. I don't know if it's it's going to be treated as being a part of that category, let's say, but it is it is really nicely done. Yeah, very nicely done. I'm always excited about free content, says Evil Freak. Yeah, these updates are free still. How cool is that? Jeez, that's something we forget. Don't have to pay for these updates. They just they just keep coming. I, th I feel like the sniffer maybe just needs another feature or something. I don't know. It's certainly, it's certainly not doing anything wrong. I think if I remember correctly, the way it was described, it sounds like the process of uh, growing it, like uh, an egg, might be an interesting activity. So if that can be, if that can be done, that, that would be a good feature for it to expand on. Have a little fun. Do something a little different. Because I love the plants, the images Roger Badgerman leaked. Yeah, they look really ambitious and an interesting compliment to what we've already seen. We don't know when they're going to get added and if they're legit, I guess. Uh, the cherry tree, I'm not entirely convinced. Oh, Sly Slime says, I saw someone suggested trims for shulker boxes. I found that kind of interesting. If you could customize them to help you understand what's in them more, that would definitely be cool. But anyway, onto the cherry tree. I gotta, I gotta admit, I'm not a big fan of it. Like, it, I can't deny it looks good, and the cherry wood is really nice, actually. The cherry wood's super cool. But it's the, I think it's something with the leaves. The leaves just don't feel right. I can't really put my finger on it, perhaps. I mean, the shape of the tree is cool. Always like a new tree type. I like the wood, the textures. 
It's just the leaves. I think it's the leaves. There's something about them. I like the way they drip particles, but you know when you know when people say like that's modded or whatever. I don't. I don't like that. Like I read those comments. There's a bunch of new stuff, and people go, "Oh, it feels so modded." And a lot of the time, it's like, "Well, of course it will, because it's added something to the game, right?" But I think there's another way you can use that, which is that a lot of mods don't try to follow the Minecraft aesthetic or principles. So sometimes saying this feels modded might be a comment about how it doesn't really fit into Minecraft, which I don't think is true of pretty much 99% of how the game's been developed. Because you can fire up some mod packs that really just change the whole dynamic of what playing Minecraft is, right? But something about those leaves, they just they just remind me of like when you play a mod pack and it feels like this isn't trying to fit in. You know, this sometimes you'll get textures where maybe they're like a different resolution or the just the principle of the texture is just completely flat or there's something very different and it's just it feels modded because it's not trying to fit in with vanilla and those leaves i don't know they they, they give me that feeling but maybe they'll just grow on me you know slice says it's impossible to change the game in any way without getting this isn't different enough or this feels modded true true i don't know because i i feel like a lot of stuff that's new that gets added doesn't really evoke that feeling of like this feels modded i mean as i said like i separate that there is modding the game as in you're adding something to it but then there's also modding as in modders who create mods where they're not trying to fit in with minecraft like if they add something like a magic mod right sometimes it's the aesthetics they just don't follow minecraft's principles the play style is just completely different they've turned it all on its head that's what i'm getting at and i feel feel like the leaves just go a little in that direction I think Slice is referring to the community reaction. Yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. Anyway, let's have a little love in the chat for our Mojang devs for taking the time out of the day to uh, listen to us and, and gather some feedback about 1.20. This game is getting updated for free over and over again. How awesome is that? There's uh, way too much negativity sometimes in this community. And uh, we've got a fantastic team of devs keeping the game going, keeping it going strong, you know? So yeah, show them some love. Yeah, thanks guys for popping in. Did you enjoy the clip? Then subscribe for more because my second channel is where we post clips as well as the VODs of the live streams that I do on twitch.tv slash which many of the clips come from. Anyway, thanks for subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.